Thank you for participating in this project. Mercury is all around us and your contribution will help all of us better understand how Mercury moves through the environment and understand the risk of Mercury to national park ecosystems. To collect samples that don't get contaminated means following protocols and keeping everything ultra clean. This video supports the sampling guide for the collection of dragonfly larvae, water, and sediment samples from national parks for mercury analysis. You can download a copy of the guide at the website on the screen. Read the guide to make sure you have enough time for your participants to collect everything. You will be collecting water, sediment, and dragonfly larvae samples and submitting the samples for mercury analysis unless otherwise noted by the project coordinator. Field sampling is fun. Take pictures, be safe, make observations, record the event, but for sampling be sure to follow the protocol. This water sampling video is split into equipment, when to sample, where to sample, how to sample, and storage and shipment of your sample. When you have arranged to participate in the Dragonfly project, you will receive a field collection kit. Keep everything stored in a safe, clean area until you are ready to sample. From the field gear sent to you, you will need two pair of white powder-free gloves and the double bag PET bottle leave the bags closed until you are out in the field, and a field data sheet, a cooler, a sharpie marker. You will have one PET bottle for each water body that you are sampling. You will need to provide bagged ice, a trash bag, waders or boots, and your citizen scientists who are going into the water must have personal flotation devices. Contact your project coordinator at least two weeks prior to when you plan to collect the water sample. This allows analytical preparation time for the lab. If you decide to collect this sample on a separate day, with fewer citizen scientists, just make sure to collect within two weeks before or after when the dragonflies are collected. Also note, it is best to collect water samples on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, as samples must be shipped within 24 hours of collection and because there is not always someone in the lab to accept samples on Saturday or Sunday. Do your best to schedule sampling during consistent weather conditions as this will reduce uncertainty when interpreting results. If you are collecting all three sample types on one day, water, sediment, and dragonfly larvae, collect the water first. This sample is the most sensitive to contamination and needs to be collected before anyone goes in the water, before any possible stirring up of the site. For lakes, paddle or reach or wade without stirring up the sediment a few feet from shore into at least one meter of weed-free water. For streams, reach into a deeper part of the stream, preferably a pool below a riffle. If necessary, walk upstream against the flow to the sampling site. If someone wades right in before collecting the water sample, then the area will be disturbed. So move a bit upstream or wade far out enough to avoid the disturbed area or return another day for water samples. You will need two people to do the sampling. One person will be clean hands and the other person will be dirty hands. Dirty hands' job is to deal with everything so that clean hands only touches the inner bag and the sample bottle. At the sampling site, dirty hands gets and opens the glove bag and lets clean hands pull out a pair of gloves. Your gloves should have arrived such that the wrist of the glove is facing the opening of the bag. That way the gloves can be pulled from the bag with only minimally touching the wrist part and without having to touch the palm or finger parts of the gloves, as those parts will be in contact with the sampling container. Once the gloves are on, clean hands is careful not to touch the outside of the gloves or anything else. Dirty hands puts on the other pair of gloves. Dirty hands opens the outer bag of the PET bottle and does not touch anything inside the outer bag. Clean hands reaches into the outer bag with a PET bottle and unzips the inner bag and pulls out the sample bottle. Clean hands takes the bottle to the sample site. Once in place at the sampling site, clean hands unscrews the bottle cap and rinses the bottle and cap three times, filling from one side of your body upstream, emptying on the other side of the body downstream. If you are sampling from a boat, then fill the bottle with rinse water on one side of the boat and empty the rinse water on the other side of the boat. Clean hands only needs a little bit of water for this. It does not need to fill and empty the bottle three times. 
Once the bottle is rinsed, Clean Hands then fills the bottle completely and caps the bottle, preferably underwater. Clean Hands then returns the full bottle to the inner bag, seals the inner bag, and pushes it inside the outer bag and seals that. Sealing of the outer bag can be done by clean hands or dirty hands as it signals the completion of collecting this sample. Once the sample is in the bags, both clean hands and dirty hands can remove their gloves and throw them in the trash bag. If, while collecting, the bottle is placed too low in the water and you get sediment, mud, silt, or anything else from the bottom of your water body in the sample, just pour the sample out, rinse the bottle three times, and try again. Record the barcode that is on the bottle onto your field data sheet. If you have not done so yet, fill out the other information on the field data sheet. Place sample, sealed in its double bags, on ice in the cooler to store while in the field. If you are not doing the sediment and dragonfly sampling and are done sampling, or you are moving to your next water body, remember, leave no trace. Be sure to collect all of your field gear and remove trash from the sample site before departing. When you get back to the lab or office, store the well-marked sample in the fridge until you ship. To ship the water samples, you will need your water sample, a cooler, your FedEx shipping label, clear packing tape, your field data sheet, ice, not dry ice, and your field coordinator's contact information. Contact your coordinator when you are getting ready to ship your sample to verify that someone is available to accept the shipment. Shipment of coolers should be sent FedEx overnight with prepaid return label included in the kit. Your coordinator will need to know the FedEx tracking number for your cooler. Please be ready to give it to him or her. Again, because there is not always someone in the lab to accept samples on Saturday or Sunday, and because samples need to be shipped within 24 hours of collection, it is best to collect water samples on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Water samples must be shipped within 24 hours of collection. To prepare the samples for shipment, put your samples in a cooler with ice, not dry ice. Place a copy of the field data sheet in a zipper bag. Don't forget to keep a copy for yourself. Seal the bag with a copy of the field data sheet and place that in the cooler as well. And seal the cooler. Put the shipping label on the cooler and take to your local FedEx office or arrange for pickup. If you have any questions about sampling, please contact your project coordinator. Keep things clean, be safe, thank you, and have fun.